A moto journalist from ADB Pulse recently asked me 10 questions about the DR650. They were keen to interview a DR owner with massive amounts of useful knowledge about the bush pig and with great riding skills too. Nah, those guys are all busy, so they asked me instead. The DR650 is often modified for adventure riding and touring, but also more for a more dirt-oriented dual sport platform. Which options have you tried? Which one makes more sense to you? The old Bush Pig is certainly a flexible platform. In the past, I did try setting up a DR650 for more dirt riding. Yeah, knobby tires, the suspension definitely needed work for any spirited off-road riding. You can actually drop a lot of weight with simply removing items like the fork spaces, bar ends, pillion foot pegs and so on. I've got a whole video dedicated to putting the Bush Pig on a diet. It's still bloody heavy, but it can be a respectable dual sport bike if you are into the old school. But an adventure setup? It really depends on how much you want to spend. The basics are just a bigger fuel tank and a comfortable seat. And of course, if you are prepared to sell your kids to raise funds, there's an endless array of parts and mods. As to which makes more sense, well, many riders have been happy with either setup. Given its weight though, I think the DR650 makes more sense as a budget adventure platform. The DR650 is now cancelled in Australia, but I'm sure plenty of them are still around. Does the aftermarket and Suzuki still seem interested in supporting this bike, or has popularity started to die off? All the usual mobs are still going strong. Uh, Vince Strang Motorcycles is our Aussie equivalent of Pro Cycle in the USA, in terms of providing a huge array of DR parts. Uh, FFRC make the well-known flex valves for the front forks. They report there are still plenty of orders for these, as well as DR650s brought in for complete suspension makeovers. The Aussie DR650 groups certainly seem to indicate the community is strong. I think it will take years to see any drop in popularity. In the long term, will the DR650 will have the popularity equivalent to the Hilux and other classic four-wheel drives? or will it phase out quickly in favour of newer fuel-injected bikes? A very interesting question. Back in 2008, Honda made the stupid decision to stop importing the XR650L, a bike that's arguably better than the DR650 for most Aussie riders. It has taken years, but now it's rare to see these around or find much in the way of parts and support due to natural attrition. This will undoubtedly happen with time for the DR650 as well. I don't know if the Suzuki will ever be regarded as a true classic in the wider riding community, but certainly plenty of DR owners see it this way. I know you've owned a few DR650s and ridden with lots of DR owners. What are the biggest benefits as you've seen them? What were the biggest drawbacks? Benefits? Cheap. <laughs> Many of us love the old school technology with less things to go wrong. No fuel pump, no fuel injectors, no radiators, no ABS. There's a huge range of aftermarket parts to create the Franken bike of your choice. The drawbacks, god awful suspension, rock hard seat, a ridiculously heavy restrictive stainless steel exhaust, a pile of simply dumb design features which I list in my DR650 known issues video. Although there is still good news in that most of the really dumb stuff can be fixed very cheaply. Engine modifications. Do more? Or less? Or keep it stock? This really comes down to the individual rider. A stock DR puts out about 35 horsepower of the rear wheel. Doesn't sound like much but it has piles of torque in the mid-range. Plenty of riders keep their bikes stock very happily. I often keep my DRs stock for the first six months or so and they will still wheelie easily in third gear. However, it's very easy and comparatively cheap to get roughly a 10% power increase across the rev range. The first 5% is simply a jetting kit or if you like the do-it-yourself approach, try the famous BST Magic Mods. The other 5% increase comes through replacing the stock exhaust. Personally, I think the resulting 40 horsepower at the rear wheel is great. But of course, owners throw wads of cash at the 790cc big bore kit and modified head, which gets you up to about 55 horsepower. 
What about suspension? Does it make sense to fiddle with it or leave it stock? Again, it's really up to the individual rider. A very light rider who just rides gently around town and some smooth dirt roads may find it works fine. But the reality is most riders will benefit from at least a few basic mods. Any rider over 80 kilograms will find them too soft, especially the moment they start any serious off-road riding. The front forks are the ancient rod style, which has been carbon dated back to the Jurassic era. There's a pile of free and budget mods that are worth experimenting with, and there's a range of quite cheap valves that can get cartridge style performance from the rod forks. FFRC's flex valves or cogent DDC valves for starters. What's the most miles you ever put on a single DR650 that you've owned? And what's the longest trip? Oh, <laughs> this one will be a bit embarrassing. My highest mileage was only 28,000 kilometres. After two years, I start to look around at other models and I think I will be happier with another bike. But eventually, I just buy another DR650. This has happened four times now, so I'm currently on my fifth bush pig. Sigh. <laughs> My longest trip, only 2,600 kilometres. However, we spent months planning the route, which was 90% off-road, and it took nine days very solid riding through countless state forests and remote dirt roads. An epic ride. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Did you ever find any luggage platform that worked particularly well? Any other accessories that you figured were a must-have? I guess it varies from trip to trip. When we were camping, I just bought very cheap side racks from eBay and strapped dry bags to them. When we aren't camping, I just strap a dry bag to the seat. <laughs> I'm a starving YouTube artist, so everything is done on a shoestring budget. Must have accessories? Nothing stands out. I try to avoid bling for the sake of bling. I don't regard anything as a must have. Nah, except for a helmet, perhaps. Not a good rider? The answer is bling. We will tell you which anodized alloy products will add extra horsepower to your bike. Is the DR650 powerful enough for the street, considering how much jam the modern liquid-cooled twins have? <laughs> it's a slug compared to most modern twins. If you want blistering acceleration, the DR650 will disappoint on so many levels. You should just buy that twin or pay the big bucks for a Husky 701 or KDM 690. It, it depends on your style of riding. If you aren't into revving bikes, then the meaty mid-range of the DR is absolutely fine for road riding. The engine will burble along at low revs all day at highway speeds. But if you want rapid overtaking, you will want a good tailwind, uh, assistance from gravity, and perhaps a well-timed fart if you ate baked beans the night before. How do you think the DR650 could be reasonably improved by Suzuki without spending a bundle? Woohoo! Favourite topic of all DR650 owners. Quite a few mods would cost Suzuki nothing. Change from 5 weight to 10 weight oil in the fork and rear shock, change the soft dual rate fork springs to stiffer springs, stiffer rear shock springs, softer padding to the seat, better tyres, maybe Shinko 244. Changes that wouldn't cost much, fuel injection, put cartridge forks from the DRZ on the DR650 with stiffer springs, even better, adapt the RMZ450 suspension, uh, adapt the old GSX-R650 exhaust to fit, lithium battery, bigger fuel tank, new seat, LED headlight, lighter mirrors, better foot pegs. This is only just scratching the surface, of course. If you ever have trouble getting to sleep, just ask a DR owner about their suggestions for Suzuki's next DR650 model. So, thanks for the questions, ADV Pulse. It's always fun to dissect the beast known as the bush pig. And remember, we've done a big 10-part series about the DR that covers much of this information in detail, and it may help you decide if the DR is the perfect bike for you, <laughs> or one you will deeply regret buying.